This is my 2020 Kia Telluride, and on its 10th trip, a renter brought it back smelling like a pound of weed and damage going across the entire driver's side of the vehicle. Even though damage claims are a part of the Toro journey, it's never fun when somebody does this to your vehicle. Thankfully, I developed a strategy to make these claims as painless as possible, and sometimes even come out of it with a profit. But will that be enough when a guest not only damages the outside of your vehicle, but also returns it with the check engine light on as well. Adding new cars to the fleet, dealing with guests damaging your current vehicles, it's all gonna be a part of your Toro journey. But there's so much cap from people out there trying to sell you courses, I decided to make this Inside My Toro Journey series to give you guys an inside look at what really goes on inside a car rental business. Everything from the good to the bad. So as I said, I just bought this car about two months ago and it was a few reasons why I bought this specific car. Number one is because I lost a few cars last year to total damage claims and it was just time to get a brand new car added to the fleet. Two, I specifically wanted a SUV and I wanted an SUV because after doing my market research, I actually noticed that vehicles that sat up to seven passengers or more did a lot better on the platform in terms of utilization, how much they were getting booked out plus the daily rates that you could get on them. So with all those things combined, it just seemed like a no brainer as far as the next vehicle that I should get for my fleet. Now, of course, as far as how I bought the car, I used commercial financing, which is buying it in my business name, no money down. And as far as these last two months, it's been on 10 trips exactly. And over the months it's averaged about $1,400 a month versus the $800 in expenses, which is the car note and the insurance. And that's with the daily rate being set a little bit lower because I wanted to make the listing a little bit more attractive when I first put it on the platform and get some bookings for it. So all in all, I've really been pleased with how it's been going and all the trips have been going pretty smoothly until this last one. So this guest booked the car for a quick two day weekend trip. And off the rip, I was already a little skeptical about them because they had only had one prior trip which they earned a low star rating on. But I decided to give them the benefit of the doubt. Now, check-in had went smoothly and everything was going okay, up until it was time for the guests to bring the car back. At that point, they stopped communicating with me and about 20 minutes after their checkout time had passed, I went ahead and checked my GPS and noticed that the car wasn't moving anywhere at all. So they weren't even on the way to bring the car back. I immediately notified Toro and continued to try to get in contact with the guest. They wound up bringing the car back about three hours late. And I knew in my head that about 80% of the time when guests stop communicating and don't bring the car back, there's usually something wrong with the car. And sure enough, when I pulled up, I seen a long scuff and scratch alongside the driver's side of the vehicle. Then when I opened up the doors to get inside, I noticed that the interior was a mess. It smelled like a pound of weed and there was Dutch guts all over the floor of the back seats. But that's not all. When I went to start the car, I then seen my worst nightmare. The check engine light of this brand new car somehow had turned on now. At this point, I've been renting Toro cars for a few years now, and I've become kind of desensitized to when guests damage my vehicles. But I'm not gonna hold you. This one hit a little bit different. And I was just thinking to myself, what could they have been doing to make this check engine light come on a brand new car? But first thing I had to do was go ahead and put the damage claim in with Toro and make sure I got everything situated with that. And I was still trying to contact the guests, but of course they weren't answering. Second thing I did was hit up my auto body shop guy, sent them pictures of the damages and got an appointment set up to where I can get the car in there. Now, when it comes to the check engine light, I have had claims before where I've got reimbursed for mechanical damage, but I'm not going to lie. This is probably one of the hardest things to prove when it comes to Toro. I knew out of everything that had happened with this truck, this was the thing that I was most nervous about because it could go either way. All I could do was help think to myself was I gonna be stuck with a huge bill to fix this engine. Now there were a few things that I had in place that really made this process a lot smoother. Number one was having an auto body shop that I had a relationship with who could get the work done as fast as possible. Number two is having a good inventory of car sharing tools because I actually had an OBD sensor that I plugged up to the car where I was able to get the codes and kind of know what was wrong with the car a little bit before I took it to get it fixed. And if you want to know exactly all the tools that I use in my car sharing business, make sure you check out the link below because I listed everything that I use from a day to day. And of course, number three is having a good relationship with a mechanic 
who can get you in and get that work done as fast as possible and hopefully as cheap as possible too. These are things that you definitely wanna have in place to be a successful Toro host because the longer that your car sits out, the more money you're leaving on the table from it not getting rented. All in all, just make sure you're prepared for things like this and stay in contact with Toro throughout the entire claims process. So at this point, we're about 10 days out from when the incident initially happened. And as you can see, there's no check engine light on anymore. Because the car was so new, I actually had the thought to take it back to the dealership. And once I did that, they were able to run a diagnostic and pretty much tell me that the thermostat needed to be replaced and all the coolant needed to be flushed. And after a little bit of back and forth with the dealership, thankfully, they actually told me that these repairs would be covered under the warranty that came with the car. All I would have to do is pretty much pay a $50 deductible. Due to the fact that the car has been in the dealership getting the maintenance done and I still had to go to my nine to five, I haven't been able to get the car to the auto body shop yet. But I talked to them and they told me that this fix could be done in one day and gave me an estimate, which wasn't that bad. Now, as I was running around trying to get this check engine light repaired, I did put in the damage claim with Toro for the physical damage. So within about two days, they already paid me out for it. And based on what the body shop told me, I might actually make a profit on this claim. Now, I also wanna break down the numbers as far as what I might make or lose as it regards to this trip. The original two day trip came out to about $154. And after additional charges like a late return, additional fee, smoking, as well as additional mileage, it actually came out to $463. Minus the $50 for the deductible of the repair, that brings it down to about $410 for this two day trip. Even though I'm probably still gonna make an additional 700 to $1,000 off this one trip alone, I gotta admit, this process can still be very frustrating and time consuming. You gotta realize that behind the scenes, I'm still taking Ubers to and from dealerships, mechanics, and auto body shops all throughout the week. So that can just be taxing, not only financially, but time-wise as well. But at least I got that check engine light repair for little to no cost, and I got the car back listed and ready to rent on the Toro platform. I do still have the scuffs on the driver's side of the door, but because it's purely cosmetic, they still let me rent it out to guests in the meantime. And last time I talked to the body shop, they did say that they can get me in this week, and the repair shouldn't take longer than one day. So I'm not really tripping about that. Now, this may seem like a crazy situation, but to be honest, it's just another day in the life of a Toro host. So you really just gotta take your bumps and bruises, learn from every situation and perfect your strategy. Either way, having a car down definitely sucks, but once you start to scale your fleet and get multiple cars, when one is down, you can still rely on your other vehicles to keep renting and bringing in cash flow. And that really just speaks to the importance of diversifying your fleet and making sure that you can handle situations as quickly and efficiently as possible. So for all my fellow Toro hosts out there who may be new to the platform, just be prepared. And if you are a Toro host looking to scale your fleet with more cars so you can make more money, Make sure you watch this next video where I break down my exact method on how I buy cars just like this in my business name with no money down. Let's get it.